Conclusions. A basic summary is that we have provided evidence that the Ritvik representative system that Srila Prabhupada set up and authorized is fully bona fide. And we have shown that the multi-guru system is actually what is bogus. Guru means master. Guru is to be the highest and ultimate master for the disciple. But in ISKCON, there is the GBC. And there is no past precedence of having multi-gurus, multiple gurus, in the same organization. Also, I explained how Srila Prabhupada prescribed that the GBC is to give the spiritual guidance to take care of the spiritual welfare of all the members in their zones. Giving those duties over to the so-called gurus totally undermines the position and function of the GBC and the system of management that Srila Prabhupada had established and that he had explicitly instructed was not to change. It amounts to nothing less than disobedience by the GBC to Srila Prabhupada's instructions. So again, I'm not going to review all the arguments as it would just be giving the same arguments and explanations all over again. But several main points I will go over, however. The first is what I call the five key words that Srila Prabhupada spoke as part of his response to the GBC's question regarding how he wanted initiations to be conducted after he departs, after he's no longer present with us. Those five key words were, after this is settled up, which, as I have explained, means that as of May 28, 1977, Srila Prabhupada had not yet settled how he wanted initiations to be conducted after he departs. It seems that everyone for the past 44 plus years have totally ignored, just not really heard or understood what those five words really meant. As of that date, Srila Prabhupada had not given any settled up answer to this most important question that was asked. He deferred it to a later date and told that after he has settled this up, then he will give the names of those who he will have chosen to act as officiating Ritviks. This he did in a formal written document, the July 9th letter, where he not only gave the names of 11 Ritviks, but he then gave a written description of how those initiations are to be conducted. This was his final settled up answer to the question that was asked on May 28th, asking him how he wanted the initiations conducted after he was no longer present with us physically in this world. He wanted us to continue with the Ritvik system where he would remain Iskhan's one and only Diksha Guru. And the second main point, which I am sure I have driven home and made very clear in this presentation concerns why and how the GBC got all this wrong. It has to do with the totally flawed and completely wrong and misleading official GBC report of that May 28th meeting. That flawed report stated that when Srila Prabhupada was asked this question regarding how initiations would be conducted after he departs, that he that report said that he said he would soon select men who would initiate their own disciples. In other words, the report was saying that the men he would soon select would be regular gurus on his disappearance. But that is not what Srila Prabhupada had actually said. He said he would soon select men who would be Ritviks. As far as anyone becoming regular guru or actual guru, that was not on his disappearance, but he repeated three times in that meeting that it is on his order, but by his order, when he orders, that person will be actual guru. The flawed and misleading GBC report left out the fact that Srila Prabhupada said he had not settled this issue as of that day. That after this is settled, then he will select Ritviks, not regular gurus. That flawed report failed to mention the word Ritvik at all. Rather, it replaced the word Ritvik with guru. Then the flawed report 
also failed to mention that it was on his order that one would become an actual guru. In essence, the flawed report replaced on my order with on my disappearance. And this flawed and misleading report was the only, only information that the GBC had for many, many years as to what they wrongly thought Srila Prabhupada had given as his answer to that question. This report totally misled the GBC. They based their decisions and path they took on this very faulty report. The report misled them to think that the 11 men Srila Prabhupada named as Ridviks would have become his successor gurus on his departure. It was those conclusions based on this totally flawed and misleading report that set the GVC down a totally bogus and baseless path of trying to prop up unfit men to the level of bona fide guru. That report set Iskand down the wrong path, a path that his divine grace never intended or wanted the GBC and ISKCON to take. And the GBC have been too damn stubborn and self-serving to admit their horrendous mistake. The path they embarked upon, trying to force fit multiple gurus into the ISKCON system of management, gurus who were never authorized by Srila Prabhupada, who were not fit or qualified for the position, that path had, and still has, no bases at all in Srila Prabhupada's teachings and instructions. Not one single hint of an instruction or shred of any guidance given by Srila Prabhupada to set up such a multi-guru system. Nothing. And no basis in any past precedence. It is a totally baseless path. And to underline this, all we have to do is see how, after Srila Prabhupada departed, the GBC were totally lost on how to take even the first step. They were totally in the dark and had no clue how to even begin to enter down this path. Why did they find themselves so lost on how to begin? Simple. Because Srila Prabhupada had left them without any guidance on that path. But why would Srila Prabhupada have done that? Again, very simple. Because the GBC had taken the wrong path. Srila Prabhupada gave absolutely no guidance on this path because it was not the path he wanted them or us to take. Finding themselves totally lost with no direction, no guidance, no map, no enlightenment given by Srila Prabhupada, the GBC had to turn to Srila Prabhupada's godbrother, Sridhar Maharaj. They took all guidance from him and followed his advice on how to proceed, how to force fit multiple, multiple gurus into the ISKCON system of management. And the heavy metal irony of this was that it was none other than this very same Sridhar Maharaj at the time of Srila Bhaktisiddhanta's disappearance, the Srila Prabhupada told us was responsible for disobeying Srila Bhaktisiddhanta and by electing a so-called successor guru. Srila Prabhupada blamed this very same Sridhar Maharaj for reaching all wrong conclusions on this very same issue regarding the very same circumstance, that is, the departure of the current Acharya. And because Srila Prabhupada left the GBC with no guidance on the, this path, they turned to that very same person who Srila Prabhupada said had taken all wrong actions and had all wrong conclusions on this same exact issue. When you study the real facts in history, this is just totally unbelievable. The whole current guru system at ISKCON from day one, has absolutely no basis whatsoever in any instruction or guidance given by ISKCON's founder, Acharya A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Yet the GBC also claimed from day one that Srila Prabhupada had authorized them, the GBC, to ordain or rubber stamp 
additional gurus. But what did they base that major aspect on? Well, Srila Prabhupada said that the GBC could add to the list of Ritvik representatives via a very construed process involving wondrous twisting and bending, the GBC came to the illustrious conclusion that when Srila Prabhupada authorized them to add to the list of Ridviks, the GBC proclaimed what he was really authorizing them to do was add to the list of gurus. Well, how did the GBC reach that off-angled, twisted, bent up, and construed conclusion. Well, again, it goes back to that totally flawed and misleading GBC report. Because that report misstated that Srila Prabhupada would soon select men who would initiate their own disciples. So the GBC's conclusion was that the list of Ridviks was actually a list of gurus despite the fact that the list itself only referred to them as Ritviks, the GBC concluded, no, no, this is really a list of gurus. And since Srila Prabhupada said they could add to that list, the GBC, using such twisted, bent, off-angled logic, construed this to mean that in reality, Srila Prabhupada had authorized them to add to the list of Gurus. There was no list of gurus. It was only a list of Ridviks. But the GBC have refused to let the facts get in the way of satisfying their mundane desires to become gurus. So by twisting and bending, they forced their twisted conclusions on the rest of us. The only basis the GBC have that supports their naming additional gurus is, in the end, totally baseless. Just as is the very foundation of the very same multi-guru system and path they had taken us on. So what does this mean? It means that none of the ISKCON gurus are authorized by Srila Prabhupada to act as guru within his is mission. The GBC has no such authority. So all of the ISKCON gurus, all of them, are totally unauthorized. They are bogus gurus. They are cheaters, rascals. Oh, these are not Amiyatma Dasa's words. Those are the words Srila Prabhupada called such disciples who would pose themselves as guru, who were not authorized by him. As of April 22nd, 1977, Srila Prabhupada told that he was still waiting to give any such order to authorize any of his disciples to be guru because no one was yet qualified. If one is not qualified and poses himself as guru, Srila Prabhupada called them rascal gurus. His actual words were, what is the use of producing such rascal gurus? And when asked about rubber stamping gurus, Srila Prabhupada said, you can cheat, but it will not be effective. He also quoted his guru as saying that guru is not to be selected by the GBC. So this whole guru system in ISKCON has been a complete and total farce. It has no basis. In fact, the whole system goes against Srila Prabhupada's teachings. It has no precedence. None of these men, or now women also, are authorized by his divine grace to act as guru in his mission. And without the sanction and authorization of the acharya, it means that Krishna himself also does not recognize them as authorized. The whole thing is wrong. The only thing the GBC can point to is the construed, twisted, off-angled bending of what Srila Prabhupada said. They claim Srila Prabhupada said he would soon select men who would 
initiate their own disciples after his disappearance. But what Srila Prabhupada actually said was that he would soon select officiating Ritviks. Then the JVC say that Srila Prabhupada authorized them to add to the list of gurus. But there is no list of gurus. It is only a list of Ritviks. Their whole system is based on cheating. Actually, it was originally based on the flawed report. So originally, most of the GBC were innocent. But how did that flawed report come about? It came about because some of the men who wrote that report and those signed off on it, they had such a mundane desire to want to lord it over others, to become guru, that they only heard what they wanted to hear. They didn't hear after this is settled up. They didn't hear that Prabhupada hadn't settled this issue yet, that it's not settled yet. They didn't hear that. And they didn't hear on my order, but by my order, when I ordered, they heard on Prabhupada's disappearance. They only heard what they wanted to hear. And that's how the flawed report came about. But for the rest of the GBC, they just only had that report. They didn't know. For most of them, they were innocent. So originally, the GBC was innocent. But it has been four decades now. And so many Prabhupada disciples have given so many arguments, decade after decade. And yet the GBC refuse to recognize the facts. So now it falls on them. Even the innocent ones have become offenders and cheaters and will remain so until they finally establish the system that Srila Prabhupada really wanted. So what if, what if we, the supporters of this Ritvik Ras path, what if we are actually right? which, by the way, we are, <laughs> then what does that mean? What does it mean if we are right about this? As I just said, it means that all the so-called gurus in ISKCON are bogus. They have no authorization from Krishna's authorized representative to act as guru within Srila Prabhupada's ISKCON mission. But most sadly, and horrifically, it means that Srila Prabhupada himself has been kicked out of his own mission. He has been banned by the GBC to act as the rightful, in his rightful position, as the one and only Diksha Guru for his mission. In place of Srila Prabhupada, the GBC pushed Srila Prabhupada out as the actual Diksha Guru and replaced him with unfit, unqualified men. First the first 11, then another one, another two, another three, another 20, so many, and none of them. The GBC have no authorization to do that, and none of them are authorized to act as guru. And yet the one actual guru the founder, Acharya, he has been pushed out. He has been banned from acting in his rightful position as the one and only Diksha Guru. That is a most grave and monumental offense. And uh, we're all implicated at this point. This must be rectified. All this also means that rightfully, all those who have been initiated by these bogus gurus, they should all have been Srila Prabhupada's direct disciples. This can be rectified and must be. They were initiated as members of Srila Prabhupada's ISKCON movement, so they should have been initiated as Srila Prabhupada's direct disciples. My suggestion is that those devotees who want, and, and it should be left to the individual members to make their own decision on this. But those who want, uh, the GBC should appoint Ritvik representatives 
as Srila Prabhupada had given them a th- the authority to do so, they should elect new Ritvik representatives, and then all of the devotees who desire another ceremony can be given a formal ceremony, whereby they can formally become Srila Prabhupada's direct disciples. Otherwise, and for the others who don't request such, then the GBC will need to perform a bulk ceremony, handing over all such members over to the rightful Guru, Srila Prabhupada. It is not a matter of if, it is a matter of when. So when the GBC finally takes the humble position and admits that the path that was taken over 43 years ago as of 2021 was wrong, and they finally admit that Srila Prabhupada did want us to continue along with the Ritvik representative path, then what about the current gurus? What about their so-called disciples and their relations with those who were propped up as gurus? Those gurus who are GBC members of the GBC, who remain as GBC members, as with all other members of the GBC, they must restore the duties that Srila Prabhupada had prescribed to the GBC for them to perform, which was to give spiritual guidance and take care of the spiritual well-being of all the ISKCON members in their zones. When we establish the system that Srila Prabhupada wanted, then it is the duty of the GBC members to perform the spiritual functions that today the so-called gurus are performing. But they only perform them today for those who they have performed the initiation ceremonies for. The system Srila Prabhupada had created was that the GBC would have performed those functions for all members in their zone. Those are the duties that Srila Prabhupada prescribed to the GBC even while Srila Prabhupada was present. And what about those who are gurus who are not GBC? Giving of spiritual guidance and helping the newer, less senior members is something all senior devotees at least can, if not should, be doing anyway. So those less senior devotees who still want to take guidance from a more senior devotee, they can still do so, as long as the guidance doesn't interfere with the GBC's duties. But uh, sannyasis and senior devotees can and should assist the GBC in giving such spiritual guidance to the newer devotees. So that can also continue. And such senior devotees can give their guidance to any and all who desire to take their guidance, and not just to those persons who they perform the initiation ceremonies for. So those who were so-called disciples of the gurus, uh, who still feel a strong relation with that person, with that guru, who still want to respect that person and uh, that respect them that they had given them the guidance in their spiritual life, well, that can continue also as well, as long as that respect is not to the point of still accepting and worshiping that person as their guru, but respecting and serving senior Vaishnavas, any and all senior Vaishnavas, and Vaishnavis. It, that is not only allowed and acceptable, but it is wanted and needed for one's spiritual advancement. So that doesn't have to artificially stop. If one feels indebted to a senior Vaishnav for, having, for them having helped them in their spiritual life, they can still show that person corresponding respect even to the point of bathing their feet and sitting them down and offering them prasadam, drink, and giving them accommodations and serving them. That can still be there. All senior Vaishnavas should be offered respects. The respects, the respects should be befitting of how much that person has helped one in their own spiritual lives. Even when Srila Prabhupada was present, most of the sannyasis had their brahmacharya servants. There was no guru-disciple relation uh, but there was a senior Vaishnav and a brahmachari servant or a servant relationship, a senior Vaishnav and servant relationship. It, that isn't just acceptable, it is a living aspect of our Vaishnav culture. But for those who were 
disciples and don't feel that obligation to give much special respect to those who they previously thought were their guru, they are under no obligation to have to show artificial respect, to uh, a special respect to those persons. They should still respect them as a senior Vaishnav, but if they don't feel that they really had a real personal relationship with them, there is no obligation for them to do so artificially. The point is, many of these relations of res and respecting of senior Vaishnavas will still be there. And senior devotees giving their guidance, that will still be there. Uh, but in the proper way. The main change will be that Srila Prabhupada will be everyone's direct Diksha Guru. His rightful position as ISKCON's one and only authorized and fully bona fide, fully bona fide spiritual master for his mission will be properly and rightfully restored. And the results of this is that ISKCON will flourish beyond our current imagination. What about those gurus who refuse to give up their position of guru? They can still do so. We cannot stop them, but they cannot do so within Srila Prabhupada's ISKCON mission. They will need to do so outside. They will need to start their own separate ashram. And they will no longer be part of ISKCON or under, officially or under the authority of the GBC. In fact, by them having their own ashram, they can then act, act as an actual guru, as the actual master of that ashram, where they are the ultimate authority of their own ashram, and not be under the a higher authority of the GBC. And those who want to join that guru as their disciples, as his, uh, that guru's disciples, no one is stopping them. But to do so, they must also leave ISKCON and no longer be a member of Srila Prabhupada's mission. They will be a branch, but if they're uh, how much authorized, that depends. Uh, because, I mean, in other words, if someone branches off and starts their own ashram, but they're not, they haven't got the authorization from Srila Prabhupada, then as Prabhupada's uh, disciples, we can preach they're not bona fide gurus. We may preach that, that they're not bona fide gurus. They don't have the authorization or they are not fully qualified. We may preach that and within ISKCON. But if someone feels that that's, they want to have a relationship, a, a guru-disciple relationship with that person, and, but they have to do so outside of ISKCON. Take leave of ISKCON and do it within that branch. But what if the GBC refused to take the humble position and refused to admit that they have been wrong all these decades and refused to reestablish Srila Prabhupada and his rightful position as the one and only Diksha Guru for his mission? Then at some point, enough followers of Srila Prabhupada must band together and organize themselves to start a new ISKCON and elect a new GBC who will follow Srila Prabhupada and establish him in the rightful position. This is being done in India, and it can be done in, uh, around the world as well, if it needs to be, if it needs to be. But we are praying still that the GBC members, enough of them, will understand and will take the humble position and admit that they have been wrong. Look at the evidence. Just look at the hours and hours of evidence I put here. It's undeniable. All right, I could go on and on, but I'm going to end this video here. And in doing so, this marks the end of this presentation. Ritvik, the definitive analysis. I fall at the lotus feet of my spiritual master, Jayom Vishnupad Paramahamsa Paravagachacharya Asthatara Sattva Shri Shri Mahad is Divine Grace AC Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada Ki Jai. And I am begging you, Srila Prabhupada, for your forgiveness for the offenses that I have committed. And actually, I'm begging for your mercy, Srila Prabhupada. Please, please reinstate me as a disciple in good standing with you. Shilohaba. I'm actually so fallen.
And I also offer my respectful obeisances to the assembled Vaishnavas, the followers of Srila Prabhupada. Vancha kapatira vachakapi sandhu vevacha patitanam pavanebhyo vaishnavebhyo namo namaha. And I also beg uh, your forgiveness for the offenses I may have committed uh, in, in producing this presentation or at any time. Uh, please forgive me for my offenses. Uh, and I want to also, though, thank you for having, well, uh, you know, uh, watched so many hours and hours of video that those of you who have, um, thank you for your patience. And I pray that you have gained an insight into this issue. I, uh, I hope you have gained from uh, this presentation and that you have a uh, clear understanding of what Srila Prabhupada actually wanted. And, you know, obviously, and how things have happened the way they have within ISKCON over these past decades. And I have tried my best to produce this presentation for Srila Prabhupada and have prayed and begged for his guidance such that at least the basic message that, I've, that has been presented here was and is what he wanted presented. I have tried my best to seek his guidance such that this it will be Srila Prabhupada's presentation and not Amayatma Das's. As I have s said, uh, this much I can say. Uh, you know, I can say that this has been my mood and my sincere prayers for many, many years as I produced this presentation. And Srila Prabhupada, I again beg your forgiveness if I have failed in this endeavor to make this presentation, your presentation. Yet if I can be so bold, I will say publicly that in my heart, I feel that Srila Prabhupada is pleased with this service that I've worked on for so many years. I started work on this in the summer of, of 2008. And it's, of this video it is now December of 2021. You know, this, is, this will be the final video, at least the final video for now. There is ancillary notes and things to make, but it will still take some more time to work on the website uh, before I put it up online. But I'm going to do this very shortly. And, and when I do originally put this up uh, online, as I said, some of the animations are not going to be done. Um, the animations are more like it's sort of like entertainment. They're not really part, you know, they aren't going to affect the philosophy. The basic, the main part of the presentation is now complete. So the main, you know, information is there. Some of the animations aren't done yet, you know, so if you watch it as early on as I put it up and you, you know, but as I get those animations done, I'll be putting them up. Some of the ancillary notes, many ancillary notes are not done yet, sidebars, whatever you want to call them. And uh, as I get those done, I'll put them up. But the main presentation, the main, you know, purport, the main uh, substance, it is now complete, at least enough to put it up online, which I will do shortly. And, you know, I just have to tweak a little bit of the website programming. It's done in JavaScript. And uh, all right, so thank you. Uh, again, thank you for taking your time and having the patience to watch this presentation. And thank you again, Srila Prabhupada, for giving me this service and allowing me to at least, you know, humbly try to perform this service for you. Aspiring to become a most worthy and humble servant of Srila Prabhupada and servant of his followers, your servant, Amiyatma Das. Hare Krishna, Hare Bo. Jai, Haribo. <laughs>